All right, hello and welcome back to our zombie game. So, sorry for the long delay. Uh, a lot of things have happened. I injured myself twice. I broke my glasses. I got a new job. <laughs> a lot, a lot has happened within the last few days. Also, purchased a new vehicle. Uh, but that's all beside the point. Let's dive right into what we need to get doing. Uh, what we need to get done today. So. I thought something that would be nice and simple uh, for us to continue on would be to go ahead and set up barriers that we can buy. So before we do that, we're going to create a nice little, uh, nice little enclosure. So that way we can use that as a reason for us to get around. So we're going to do this and we're going to expand it a little bit. So this might just take a few seconds. So there's a nice little enclosure. And then we'll just copy that. We'll do it like, we'll do it like this. Pull this one away a little bit. Maybe like there. Okay. So we have two enclosures here. And now we're going to make, we're going to make these. All right, so we have blueprints. So now we're going to create a new folder. We're going to call these barriers. We're going to make a new blueprint class. We're going to make an actor. We're going to call this barrier. All right. So to start off with, we're going to add a static mesh and we'll just make it a cube because there's nothing else that we really need to need to do here. So we'll make that a cube and we'll drag it out there. All right. So our cube's a little small. We're gonna need it a little bit bigger to completely encase that. So we're going to chew, we're going to just make it three times larger. That's about good for us right there. Okay, so if we play, obviously uh, it's gonna block us from doing what we need to do. Okay, so we've got one barrier there. We've got another here all right so one thing that i like to do from here is i like to add an arrow component that'll show us which direction is the front of it so here we can see that the front is actually right here all right and since that is now the front we're going to go ahead and add a we're going to go ahead and add a widget and in order for us to apply this widget, we'll have to make one, uh, but we're just gonna put that widget on now. And we're also going to add a sphere collision. And we just want that to be attached to the de default scene root. Okay, we're gonna make this four times. That is not what we wanted to do. Five times okay so we'll do that we'll pull this to the front all right and now we're going to create an overlap event on component begin overlap cast to as to third or first person character and if it is this what it's going to do is is overlap overlapping we're going to Get this set to true. And then on the end overlap, we're going to do this. Or we actually don't need to do this, but we're going to set it to false. All right. Uh, let's just go ahead and do this just in case something weird happens, like a projectile happens to set the overlap to uh, end overlap so something weird happens so we'll just go ahead and do that no big deal all right so event tick we're going to check is overlapping and we're doing this first because whenever we have an event tick this probably isn't the best event tick can really start to strain your uh, your game if you use it too often but in this case we're just checking a boolean which was one of the fastest operations that you can do true or false and if it's false then we just don't do anything. But if it is overlapping, we're going to do is key or is a button. I can't remember. Pressed. Pre 
chest. Sorry, it's been a second, so let me see if I can find where it is. Alright, so give me one second. I'm going to do a little bit of research because I forgot how to do this. Give me one moment. Alright, and I'm back. So we are going to go ahead and do this. We're going to get the player controller. So, I was uh, correct, is input key down. And then we're going to use the E key. And we're just going to branch... And so if, 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 so if it's overlapping, then we check if the key's down and then we're gonna do a little delay because we don't want it to do it if just immediately presses. In the zombie games, there's typically a small delay and then we're going to check again if the key is down. And if that's true, then we destroy the actor. Okay, so let's go ahead and give this a test. So we walk up, let's just test. All right, so that's just tapping, so let's hold it down. And here we go. Hmm. That's a little strange. What could that be? Is that the arrow component? Let's delete the arrow component. It's very weird that something's persisting after it's dead, so let's see what happens here. I don't really have an answer for why that's working. Let's try to just go ahead and build and see what happens here. All right, so I went ahead and rebuilt and it didn't change anything. So we'll have to figure out what's going on there a little bit later. Uh, but for now, we do have a working barrier. So now let's go into our UI folder. We're going to make a, another, or we're gonna make a user interface for our, uh, for our barrier. Mm, yeah, let's go ahead. So we're gonna call it barrier UI. All right, so now let's just get a text box and we're just gonna put this uh, dead center. We're gonna anchor it in the center. And text box, we're going to hook it up to variable, call it cost string. All right, so we may we make a little variable here that's a string uh, that's gonna tell us the cost. So now we're going to do uh, make it a custom event, and we're going to call this update barrier UI. All right, and what this is going to do is we're going to get this cost, and we're going to add an input, and it's going to take a an integer, and then cost from parent all right so now we're going to go to our barrier we're going to go to our widget class we're going to select our barrier barrier ui and then we're going to get our widget cast to barrier barrier ui then we're going to do that as soon as we begin playing and then we are going to update barrier ui and we're going to get the cost from here. And our default cost is 2400. Warning, barrier UI does not inherit. What's your barrier UI does not inherit from which one will always fail. Uh, I believe 
that should fix that. Okay, so now we're going to go here and we're going to do, I think, so we're gonna make the default value Hang on, I, I don't remember what it looks like whenever you walk up to it. It doesn't matter, we'll make it We'll make it our own. So we'll make it this, so now we're going to, that's the default value, and then we're going to append, and then we go to string. We'll pin that to this, and then we are going to set that to this. And there we go. We're gonna go back to our designer. We're going to bind this text block to the cost and then if we go to our barrier now we're going to grab our widget we're going to pull it forward since this is the front we're going to go ahead and add that arrow component back so that way we know exactly which way the front is why is our arrow component oh it's there it's just it's just being weird or it's just small because it's not the parent anyway uh, so we're going to go ahead and make this like 0.25, maybe 0.4. That should be okay. All right, so let's go ahead and give it a test. It, should, it shouldn't be visible until, until the player uh, overlaps it. So we're going to actually set the visibility to false by default. And then when it overlaps, we're going to set visibility to true. And then we're going to take this and we're going to copy it, put it down here, and then we're going to set the visibility fall to false. All right, so now, ooh. So that did not work. Well, actually, let me try that again did not it's because I did not uncheck that so let's do this all right so now we have working barrier systems very nice very nice so I guess I'm going to conclude that video I know it's short but I do have more days off coming uh, I've worked every single day since I got until and since this every single day since the last video i have worked and it's been very hard to find time uh to do this with uh my new job where i had to get accustomed to the game that we were making and a few other things but that's beside the point we'll uh i'll try to create a more regular upload so that way everyone can follow along but we're, we're going really slow right now but just bear with me it will become better as we go along. I just need to have like a full day where I can make multiple tutorials. And I don't really, this one was a little fast paced and I didn't explain a lot of things. And, and mostly it, there wasn't a lot to explain. This is pretty straightforward uh, pending. We covered that in the previous video. Uh, perhaps I can go over some of the things here with the overlap and the casting to character uh, but basically, uh, I think this is pretty basic, but whenever you, whenever something overlaps with the sphere that we made on the barrier here, it's basically just checking to see if that's the player. And if it is, it'll say set overlapping to true for our event tick, which is called every frame. It's going to check if the player's overlap overlapping and, uh, then we could make it faster and optimize it, but for the scope of this game, I don't think that's important. So we'll just leave it as it is. And uh, so I think that's good for now. I'll make another video tomorrow and we will begin working on making new weapons. See you guys later.